I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is April 18th, 2022. And in this video, I'm going to show off a Christmas frame mat I created in OpenSCAD and go over a little bit of how to use it. Okay, so we'll just show the results of the specific one I have here. So there is Christmas 2022, and there's Gur. Now, if you do this, you'll notice if you do lettering like this, you got to make sure you use a font that'll span and cross over. I'm not sure the word of that, but a stencil font, maybe? There's a word for it. Because um, if you don't do that, you know, if I had a, a zero here, it's not going to work very well because it's not going to connect. And it'll just be a big nothing there. So you got to make sure you have uh, chosen a good font that's going to work for that. Um, and also, I'm limited in size. It's about as big as I can go. But we'll go over that. Uh, another thing to make note is it's probably a good idea to run the first layer a little slow. Otherwise, things like this can happen. Oh, put that on the oh, let's see if you can show it there. There's my disaster. Uh, another thing, I usually use a glue stick. So I, I really focus on the corners, putting a little glue stick down to help it adhere a little better, and run it slower on the first on the first layer, which I'll go over here in a minute when I go over the details. But um, mats, you can make mats. So let's go over the details and talk some more about this. Okay, first some URLs. So I've already put this out on printables a, a couple days ago, maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, and here's where it is. So you can go find, it's in the show notes, a link in the show notes, but you can go find it there. And I put the open SCAD code out there, and I also made uh, STL files from the year 2000 to the year 2030. If you actually like this specific one, it's nice and convenient, you can print it out. But you also have to have the same frame size, so who knows. But I have to print them out because my wife is expecting them. Uh, now, if you fiddle with this open SCAD and you want to use the same font, uh, here's where that font is that I'm using. You need to go download that and, and use that font. Okay, and also for those who are GitHub freaks, I put this out, the open SCAD code out there as a gist. You can just go directly down there and download it, and the link will be in the show notes. Okay, so there's all that. Oh, another thing, if you're using fonts, um, I guess I'm having some issues, or I had to go look this up. I, in On Windows, on my C drive users, my username, I had to make a dot .fonts folder, and that's where I had to put the dot .fonts. I had to put the fonts, otherwise they weren't going to work. So there's just a word of the wise. Okay, for the custom fonts. Okay, with that, let's go just, uh, I'm not going to recreate this, but I'll kind of show how you can utilize this if you want to change a little bit. Now remember, you're limited to size, so you can go a little bit bigger on the Prusa i3 Mark III, but not much bigger. But there is a Prusa XL coming out, so if you want bigger. And also, I think this is probably a little too big to do on the Mini. I haven't looked at it, but uh, this is the size my wife wants, <clears throat> so that's what I went with. Now, if you want to change this, couple things. You can come here and change the thickness if for some reason you want it much thicker. One seems to be fine, but maybe you're doing something funny and you want a thicker one. You can change it. And then you have the base width and the base height. You can change those if you have something that's a lot bigger. Maybe coming down here and make it, you know, enormous, enormous width that makes sense for you or what have you. You can do whatever you want. Boom. If you have a really big printer, go nuts. But I don't have that. Uh, but then, let's see, da, da, da. and also the width of the window, you might want to change that. So I can come down here and rather than 160, we could say 180, and it'll adjust just fine. If we're 100, make it narrower, right? Uh, and the same thing for the height. So I can come here and make it a little taller. Well, crap, a little too tall there. Uh, kind of cut it. So I could make it, let me make it narrow so you can see. Make it 80, there you go. What did I have before? 120. Okay, there we go. Um, now, there's also this offset I set in here, which upon fiddling with this, this might be a good uh, one to go redo the code as a video, show you how to all the thought process, because I think um, I had this offset because I didn't want it to be centered. I did not want it to be centered. Uh, and as you can see, I did fix the centering left to right just fine, so as you adjust that, it automatically centers. Um, and I did adjust that, but the offset, if I put a zero offset, I need to tweak. If I do a zero offset, it puts it all the way down there. So I got a little bit of an issue with my code here. Uh, I could make it a little more generic with my offset. But as is, it's taking that base height in there. And here, if you want to tweak the offset, really, you know, here's the X, here's the Y, and then here's the real, the real offset you're concerned with. So if I made that a zero, it would center it. So make that a zero if you want to center it. Uh, if you want it up higher, make it up higher. Um, anyway, lower, make it lower. 
but I think that's a candidate to redo the code a little bit. And then when it comes to the font, this font might not actually, if you load this on your computer, you don't have this font, this font will like go to the generic, generic font. So what you can do is, you know, if you, load, if you put the font in the right place, it'll work, the same font. But if you want to change it to a different font, you come up here, easiest way to do it is go up here to go to help, go to font list, and here's all your available fonts. So I can actually, like, I think I got a Jurassic Park font. Click on whatever you want, say copy to clipboard. So copy it, hit OK, and then I'll come down here and remove all of this and just paste. And don't forget your semicolon. And now that should change to Jurassic Park font. Oh, it's got little claws down there. I guess Jurassic Park, Park font does not have year, has num it only has letters but not numbers. Okay. Oh no, it does have numbers. Oh, those are scratch numbers. So that's a two. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> those are scratch numbers. I didn't think about that. That's a little funny. So there's a two, two, and I, I guess the zero is not really a zero, but anyway. Um, then if you want to change it, you know, whatever font you have, you come down here. There's Christmas. Maybe that's not big enough. You can make it bigger. Make it a 28. Uh, same thing with that. Maybe that's not big enough. Boom. And then you can adjust it here. That's probably something I should pull out and make it more easy to adjust. But you just come down here. If that's not in the right place, you can say 48. And that will... Oh, that's the font. Sorry. That's the font size. Um, but here's the position. So here, here's where I centered it. Base width divided by two. But if I want it a little bit off-centered, I could just add 10 to that or something. And now it'll be off-centered. Or I can come down here and just say, you know, make it, make it 20. So it's all the way to the side. Christmas. Now you can't read the Christmas. Okay, so there's Christmas. So there you go. That's how you can tweak it as is and make whatever you want. Now I've made it all <laughs> made it a disaster. Let me undo all that fun stuff I did. Boom. I think that gets me back to what I was before. Okay, perfect. So there you go. So then you just make it, compile it. There you go. Uh, so with that, now let's um, let's go over the numbers. So this took two hours and 27 minutes to print. It took two cents of electricity, and it weighs a whopping 0 0.03 kilograms. And at $20 per kilogram, comes up to 60 cents for the for the for the weight. So total, it cost me 62 cents to print this guy, and you know, not bad. I'm pretty I'm happy with the results, and my wife is, and that's the important part. That's what she wanted, and it works. So um, ah, one more thing. Uh, if you're going to do this, there's a couple of things we want, to, we want to do in the slicer. So let me bring a slicer in here and see if I can... Do I have... There we go. Let me drag one of these in here. Boom. As you can see on a Prusa i3, I'm kind of pushing the limits there. So there's a couple of things I want to do. Uh, well, one thing I want to do and one thing you may or may want, not want to do. Uh, I'm going to hit printer settings because I want that first layer to run slower so that I can make sure it adheres really good. So you can go down here, go to print settings, go to speed, and you can set how many millimeters per second you want it to go. I don't think in those terms. Uh, I just think in percentages. So I can say, I think I did half speed, but might as well cover your base and say 30% speed. So 30% will run everything on that first layer, 30% of what it otherwise normally would be. And that's probably a good way to go. I probably didn't do 30%, but I definitely did half or less. Um, then another thing you could do, well, let me render this because you'll see this. Okay, so there's two hours and 40 minutes. So obviously, you know, mine was two hours and 27 minutes. So I probably didn't do 30%. I probably did a little faster. Um, uh, another thing you can do, I did a video on this on ironing. You can try it. I, I went back and forth on it. I think I like the one that's not ironed. So the surface on mine, I'm happy with. But if you want a more flatter surface, they, there's, a, there's a thing called ironing. You can go see the video I've done in it or other people's video on ironing. And what it does, you go to infill and you say enable ironing. And you can say all top surfaces are just the most. I only have one top surface, doesn't matter. Um, and once I enable that and re render it, it's going to go, there you go, seven hours. <laughs> Big difference. And what ironing effectively does, it's going to go kind of back and forth, back and forth, kind of squishing the top. And the idea is it's going to, it's, the effect they're going for is as if you got the print done and you took an iron and it kind of hit it, 
to really make it flat, really make it smooth. Um, you can give it a shot. I mean, it's, it's gonna quadruple the time of your print in this case, or nearly. I, for, I, I'm, 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 I, there's a lot of times where I'm, I am ironing things, but in this case, mm, I felt that it, it looked better without the ironing. But go check it out, try, try the different things, see what you like, and there you go. So, um, there you go. There's how the wonderful Christmas Open SCAD example. Okay, so with that, let's wrap this up. Uh, just with this reminder that 3D printing is an adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this, you can teach others, and you can make amazing designs. So design it, engineer it. I only have six more hours on the rock biter from the never ending story that I'm printing out right now. And I have really good fortune. The person who posted it on printables changed the license to public domain, which means I can post the uh, edited one, the altered one that I did once it gets done. Um, well, I mean, the files are technically done, but I don't like to post anything until I've actually printed it out myself to make sure it's actually viable. So expect some videos on that once we get this, once I get that going. Also check out the image at the end of this. It's a COVID magnet I'm working on. And a shout out to Britt Scott, a YouTube subscriber to this channel. They suggest I look at fontawesome.com for SVG files. And I was not disappointed. I found a neat virus one right off the bat. Now that, that I, that I just had to turn to a magnet. I hope it works out. If so, I'll post it on printables.